We are going to talk to um, Dave Hudgens, who was uh, relieved of his duties as a Met batting coach yesterday, and he's nice enough to join us on the show. Dave, it's Michael and Don. How you doing? I'm doing fine, Michael. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, the first question I get is, uh, do they expect you to be a miracle man? I don't see many great hitters on the Mets, so why were you fired? Well, no, nobody expects a miracle man, I don't think. Um, and you'd have to ask them why, why I was fired. I mean, uh, you know, the only thing I try to do is go out there and be prepared every day and, and uh, get the guys prepared and, and uh, be a sounding board for them. And, you know, I'm not sure what else um, – Whose ever decision this was, uh, what else they wanted. But you know, I can look in the mirror and uh, know I did a good job and and did it, put all my effort into it. And in the last three and a half or so years, I made some great relationships there and got some great people in that organization. One of the philosophies that we heard was, you know, taking pitches, and it seemed like they were behind in the counts a lot. Were they just not executing that game plan, or was it an ill-advised plan by the organization to have them take pitches in the first place, and especially make that known in public to everyone? Well, I don't think that's the philosophy. I'm not, you know, it's funny. Everybody seems to know the philosophy, but the guy that was teaching it or what it was supposed to be, um, that's never been the philosophy of taking pitches. It's it's about getting good pitches to hit. Pitchers throw under 50% strikes if you take out all swings. So obviously, we don't want guys swinging balls in the dirt and over their head. Mm -hmm. We want them getting good pitches. And if you get a good pitch to hit, if you don't get a good pitch to hit, hopefully you take it. And you hopefully you get, you know, if you get a walk, that's great. Maybe we get the pitch count up. Maybe we get in the bullpen. Those are just kind of uh, things that happen when you get good balls to hit. We're looking to hit if it's the first pitch, second pitch, fifth pitch. You know, I'm not sure where, um, where the information on our philosophy comes out, but you know, that, I, I hear that a lot, and I just shake my head going, Man, I've never talked to anybody, but they've got it figured out. But, I mean, the thing that was made public, and the players talked about it too, was hunt a strike. Yeah. And, I mean, that, that's been the age-old philosophy in baseball, so that's not really reinventing the wheel. But it seemed like, I, I don't know, maybe the hitters took it the wrong way, Dave, because they were behind in the count all the time, it seemed like. No, I don't think so. I think you better probably go look at your statistics. I don't think we were behind in the count all the time. I think our swing rate was probably up even a little bit early in the count. Um, I'm pretty sure of that. I don't know what your, what your information says, but that's not correct. And uh, we look to hit pitch. We look to get ahead in the count if we can. If the guy throws a ball, we'd like to take it. If he throws a strike, we'd like to hit it. I mean, it's kind of as simple as that. There's no secrets to it. It's nothing that anybody's trying to hide. Uh, it's nothing that the guys were confused about. You know, you just have to execute it. When you get a good pitch, you can't foul it off. you got to be able to hit it. And uh, uh, if anything, maybe that's what we did too much at home. I think we were pretty good on the road. I think fourth in the league and in, in run scored on the road, and we struggled at home. So that was the bottom line. Well, there's um, the rub with at home. I mean, I was at the game against the Yankees, 14 right. strikeouts at home, and the batting average is way down. Is the size of the building in their head? I mean, what exactly is it that these hitters just cannot seem to get any kind of groove at City Field? Yeah, we were taking a look at that over definitely over the last few weeks, and the guys, you know, I think what happens at City Field is they just try too hard. They just want to do it so much for the fans, and, and you know, we got good fans there, and, and people come out to the games, and they expect a good product, and we're struggling at home. These guys, you know, they want to do well, and I think what happens, if you look statistically, what happens on the road and at home, our fly ball rate was way up at home. Our swing and miss rate was way up at home. Our uh, exit velocity speed off the bat was down at home. So a lot of those, our chase rate was up at home. So that just leads me to the believe that guys, when they when they come home, are just trying too hard. You know, they just want to do so well, and the swings got a little bit bigger, uh, maybe a little more pull oriented, and not even not even consciously, but subconsciously, uh, those things can happen. So. Um, I, when you look at what we were home on the road, fourth in the league and runs scored on the road, and like last in the league at home, and then you look at the data that's behind it, which, you know, these days with everything that's kept, they can keep that kind of uh, information. You can kind of see what, what the reason was. Now it's just a matter of the guys making an adjustment, which I, I really think they were in the last couple games. I think we had some uh, hard hit balls and, and some better swings and better approach, and I, I think they calmed down a little bit. I mean, Duda had the single up the middle and then the homer. I think some of our – I think he was making a little bit of an adjustment as far as that goes. So I, I think it will be better as the year goes on with these guys with the weather's getting warmer. 
It's been really cold and rainy at City Field, which hasn't helped. Uh, and there's a number of reasons, but I, I think they'll I think they'll pick it up as as the season goes on at home. You know, other players have, have uh, you know from other teams say they're not affected by City Field, but the statistics, Dave, say that it is. So that leads the novices like us to say, well, maybe this ballpark is simply too big, and it gets into the Mets' heads. Yeah, do you I, th- yeah, feel it's too I big? Don't know. I don't know. I you know they brought the fences in, and we tried to get that out of guys' head that it's not too big. That you know, in fact, I think we've given up more homers at home than we have on the road, if I'm not mistaken. And right. We've given up homers. Uh, Dude has hit more homers at home than on the road. I think David has two homers at home. So I, I, if a guy hits a good, it's going to go out of that ballpark. The problem is right center field, that's where David's a lot of his power is and his natural swing is. And he's probably hit five or six balls that would have been maybe more than that out anywhere else that's not out of that ballpark. So that field was not designed with him in mind. There's no question about that. Oh, you were mentioned about the booing, which also makes it very difficult to play at home, which also can lead to the guys pressing to try to squelch those boos. But can't you understand the amount of money these guys pay for tickets? I don't believe in booing either. I'm with you. It doesn't help the team. But when a guy's been a Met fan his whole life and he's paying a lot of money for tickets, he gets upset. And that's one of the ways the fans can express how they feel about their team. Hey, I totally understand that. I've I've managed in Venezuela for several years. The last few years, i got 30,000 people in the stands. And every time I go to the mound, if somebody gives up a homer, I get booed by 30,000. So... (laughs) I, I, I've heard the boos. Uh, guys can deal with it. We understand it. Um, it doesn't help because guys net press. That's what happens. Guys try a little bit too hard, and they want to do so well at home. And I think it just – they have every right to boo. They pay their money. Uh, believe me, I understand it. We get it. But uh, I was asked, did it help? No, it doesn't help. I mean, so what? That's If they choose to do it, they do it. We're going to deal with it. Now, you. Dave, you uh, have – you have a relationship that goes back a long, long time with Sandy Alderson. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm wondering, what did Sandy tell you when he fired you, and do you think that this comes from even above Sandy? Yeah, I, I've got a great respect for Sandy. I think if, um, you know, if, if things were, you know, I don't know, I don't know what goes on in the front office or what hands are tied or whatever. So I think if Sandy could do everything he wanted to do, they would have a winner here. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, I, if, did it come from above? Um, I don't know. I mean, somebody else would have to answer that. Sandy told me, and, you know, he let me go, so he hired me. And uh, But I have great respect for Sandy. Everything he's doing, he does everything, you know, totally honest with me, with everything, the staff, uh, Terry, everybody. I mean, I really enjoyed working for three and a half years, and uh, it's too bad I had to come to an end. But, hey, uh, that's baseball, you know.